Good evening. It's Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So it's Tuesday evening, and I always talk about something downsizing, decluttering, or interior design. And tonight our topic is going to be how to emotionally let go of your sentimental clutter. So I have a question for you. Do you hold on to things that are sentimental to you just because you're afraid that if you let go of them, you'll lose the memories that are associated with them? So several years ago, after our mom and dad passed away, my siblings and I uh, were cleaning out our mom and dad's home, um, and the home that they spent so many years in that we they entertained a lot. We had many wonderful memories there. So when it came time to getting rid of some of this stuff, particularly the very large amount of china, crystal, and silver, none of my siblings wanted any of it because they just didn't entertain the way that mom and dad did. Um, but I did, and I also had a big house, so I was excited and delighted, actually, to go ahead and take on all of that china, crystal, and silver. So when I say I took all of it, that meant all 16 place settings of china, crystal, silver, the large silver trays, the ice buckets, the serving pieces. It meant all of the huge crystal punch bowls and crystal cups that Dad would serve as eggnog in at Christmas time. But fast forward, several years later, I was selling my big house and downsizing from 5,000 square feet to 867 square feet. And obviously I had no room for all of it. So I was emotionally attached to the beautiful things that mom and dad had and used, but now I had no room for it. So thanks to the wisdom of my sister-in-law, um, she, knew, she knew how much it meant to me and she said, Rita, why don't you just take four of each of those, which is exactly what I did. And now even to this day, I enjoy having four of the many beautiful things that mom and dad had. And then I had to let go of the rest and I distributed it to, in very small chunks to my family, to friends, anyone who wanted it would need it and use it. So why do I tell you this story? Because letting go of something that you are emotionally attached to um, is painful. But if you're trying to downsize, if you're trying to declutter, and you have to make decisions, um, it can be painful, but it's also very practical. So there's a reason that there are over 1,200 people that showed an interest in this Facebook Live tonight, which tells me that this topic is pretty important to many of you, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I want to share as much as I can about how to let go of that sentimental clutter. So whether it was China um, that was your mother's or whether it's photographs from your kids growing up, um, souvenirs from various trips that you might've taken, baby clothes or clothes from a deceased loved one, all of those things um, bring back memories, both good and bad. And it's of a time of your life, special people in your life, and also an event or a couple of events in your life. They're sentimental and um, that, that you're attached to them. So your, your question then is like, how do I let those things go? So first, let's define what is sentimental clutter. It'll be different for each and every one of you as it was for me. And as the saying goes, one's person trash is another person's treasure. So the bottom line is sentimental clutter is everything that we hold on to, things that we keep in our drawers, in our attics, basement, even if they no longer have a purpose. So we're attached, we tell ourselves we can't possibly get rid of them, even if they're just taking up space in our homes. When you think about it, you know, look at your, maybe your now adult children, but look into their rooms and look in their bookcases and you'll see high school trophies, You'll see teddy bears, you'll see plaques and awards. So why do we hold on to these things? So often we hold on to them because it's a way of staying connected to someone that, that we love, someone that's no longer with us. Even if kids are now in college or they're grown, it is a way for us to hold on. We look into their rooms and we see their teddy bear. But if, if someone is gone and passed away, it's also a way of honoring them and cherishing their memory, which we all try to do. A second reason that we hold on to things is guilt. And we're all probably guilty of, of doing this sometimes. Someone gave you a gift 
um, you accepted it and you feel guilty about giving it away. And then the third reason that we hold on to things is because we feel obligated. So if you have an inheritance, if you've received family heirlooms that might have been passed down from one generation to another, um, maybe it was something very special to your grandparents, oftentimes, you know, we receive it, it sits in our home, and we feel guilty um, if we give it away, and we also feel obligated to take it. So we may not want it, we may not need it, may not even fit in our homes, and we may never use it, but we keep it because we feel obliged to honor them. And then another question that comes up is how do we decide what to keep and what to let go of? So if you are sitting on a house full of stuff right now, you're saying, you know, where do I begin? So you're overwhelmed. This is very normal. So what you want to do is really just, and I'll, I'll get into the, the more specifics of it, but just don't get overwhelmed. Just take one room at a time, one area of that room at a time. So the first thing you want to do when you're trying to decide what to keep and what not to keep is first remind yourself that your deceased loved one is no longer with you, your kids are no longer around, and their memory will live in your heart, not in that item. So if it's a deceased loved one, you know, there might be, I don't know, a special teapot, um, or if there is um, the teenagers, it might be their, their high school trophies, whatever it is. You know, when you're faced with a house full and an attic full and a basement full of sentimental clutter, how do you decide what stays and what goes? So here's a couple of steps. There's a useful exercise that I'd like to kind of just go over with you right now. So if you were to start your decluttering journey right now, pick one small area of, of your home that you want to remove sentimental clutter. So it might be like a dining room cabinet. So you might pick that one cabinet, then pick one shelf of that cabinet or one drawer of that cabinet and if it's in a library, it's one bookcase, one shelf at a time. So as you look at that top shelf, let's say, if there's 10 items on that shelf, what you wanna do is just pick two that are meaningful to you and then let go of the rest. Then you go to the next shelf, the next shelf. And if you think about it, if you take two items away from something like 10 maybe on the shelf, Rather quickly, you've gotten kind of you've gotten rid of almost 80% of your sentimental clutter. Now, I'm not going to say that it's going to be fast because it's not always. But if you make a decision that you are going to decide, um, then try that shelf method and just one shelf at a time. Look at all of the items. And say I'm only going to take two things that really mean a lot to me. The other things are going to go away. So, an, a way then it, another way to do this is to set a goal. Um, for what you want um, to accomplish in that particular room, in that area of the room. And then that's when you say one shelf at a time, one drawer at a time. Um, most people, you know, want to take on this whole project as if, you know, they can do the whole house in a weekend. Well, you can't. You can't do it well. So, and remember, there are going to be triggers, and that's almost a warning. Um, certain things you'll look at and you'll start crying or, you know, you'll get angry or upset. Um, so for sure you'll be triggered at some point in the process. So many years ago, I was triggered by our dad's um, little 199 Timex alarm clock, and it wasn't anything to do with the clock. It had everything to do with the fact that when I saw it for the first time in 10 years, I was triggered by the memory of him winding that clock to get up to provide for our family. That's what made me cry. And so my sister saw that and she reminded me that it wasn't the clock. Um, it was the memory of, of, of what it held. So the clock went away. Um, I took a picture of it, wrote a story about it, did a shutterfly on it. And so one day my kids and my grandchildren will understand why it made mom cry. So the third thing to do is to remain focused. So in spite of um, all the emotional triggers that likely you will come up with, set a timer, limit the amount of time because downsizing sentimental clutter is emotionally exhausting. And if you were to say, okay, um, you know, it's a rainy Saturday, I'm gonna spend an hour doing this or two hours if you really get into it, but <clears throat> just be gentle with yourself because this is an emotional thing and you're trying to declutter, but it's not going to happen overnight. So the fourth thing is if you're stuck, ask for help. So have a friend or a family member 
kind of just be there for you. Let them love you and support you and help you keep on track. Um, this is so important because we all tend to get, you know, very involved in looking at certain things and then having memory after memory and then we get off track and then the job never gets done. So this is um, especially true, you know, if you're going through items from a deceased loved one. So when you think about going through their closets, going through some of their cupboards, everything you touch will bring back memories. So, but remember that if you want to downsize and declutter, you've got to bring yourself back home to the goal of downsizing, decluttering um, your sentimental items. You have to make those hard decisions. And over time, I will tell you, it's just like developing a muscle. It does get a little bit easier um, the more you do it. So when you're trying to decide what stays and what goes, keep asking yourself these three questions. Does it make you happy? Or if not, if it doesn't, then you kind of know the answer already, get rid of it. Um, but does it make you happy? And does it bring back good memories? And if it doesn't, um, like maybe a wedding album from a previous marriage, something like that, that could trigger a lot of bad memories as well as some good. But if it doesn't serve you right now, then, then just release it and let it go. A second question to ask yourself, will you use it? Um, and will it serve a purpose or can you display it somewhere where you can see it every day on a bookcase shelf or on a, in a cabinet, um, you know, with glass, that that memory is alive with you every single day when you, when you walk by it. So, and then the third question to ask is, are you keeping it because you think you should? So often, I mean, more often than not, this, this is the primary um, reason people hold on to things because you feel like, well, maybe I'll need it someday. Maybe my daughter will want it. I feel like I should have it. I feel guilty if I don't use it, if I don't, if I don't um, keep it. So that's why so many people's attics and basements and are filled with boxes of stuff like that. So remember, it's very normal um, to hold on to, to want to hold on to sentimental items. But when everything is sentimental, which it can't possibly be, um, when you have so much of it, then it really becomes more of a burden. So it's time to make the decision to let go and um, <clears throat> to keep only those few items that are very meaningful to you that you will use or you can display so that you can keep that memory alive. So it serves no purpose at all to keep them in boxes in the basement, which so many of us do. Um, then it's a burden because it wears down on you and that emotional clutter of, you know, something's in those boxes and it's been there for years. You don't even know what's in it. So, and that's what we, we do as human beings. We kind of hide stuff. And so we put it in boxes or in closets, but if that is becoming a burden to you, then it's no longer um, useful. And maybe it's time to think about just making a hard decision and getting rid of it. Um, and so for your own sake and for the sake of the for sake of your loved ones too, that will follow you, just get rid of it and let it go. So I hope that this has helped tonight. Now, remember, um, if you would like to receive one of my workbooks, let me grab it right here. It's actually on our, on our website. Um, it's called the five step guide. <laughs> it's going to be backwards for you. Five step guide, um, to lose the clutter, but not the memories, how to downsize your sentimental clutter. Um, we sell this on my website for $30. I am going to give away 10 of them tonight. So if you are interested, put your um, email address in the box and, and in the subject line, just say workbook. And if you are chosen, then we will send it um, a PDF version to you, a, di a digital version. Um, it is a workbook. So you, there's a step-by-step -step guide um, kind of show it to you right now, but I've created this, this chart and in this chart, it talks about different types of clutter and why that clutter is important to you. How does it make you feel? How would you feel if you let it go? And then how to let it go. So it was a simplified way of, of, um, removing the clutter. So my email is Rita Wilkins at Rita Wilkins.com. And if you are interested, just <clears throat> email me. And if you win, then we'll send it out to you tomorrow. I hope this helps. And I always look forward to getting your feedback. So if there's anything else that you want me to cover, you know, over the next couple of months, we're right now, we're creating our editorial calendar for September. Have a great night. Thanks.